Namaste friends, Haryom. This is Yogeshwar Shastri and welcome to the second part of the series on the British revenue extortion in Bharat, uh, specifically Tirunel Valley district. So this, uh, just to reiterate, this is based on my article which was first published on my blog and I will give a link in the description. So last time we tackled the general overview of the district itself. So in this uh, part, we'll very quickly have a kind of a bird's eye overview of the history of Tirunel Valley district. So I'm not an expert uh, and my knowledge of the history of that area is quite sketchy, mostly derived from gazetteers, but I think for our purposes it will suffice. Okay, so for the greater part of the last 650 years, Tirunel Valley was part of the Karnata Empire or the Vijayanagar Empire. So I think one viewer in my Vijayanagar series already corrected me saying it's the Karnata, Karnata or Karnataka Empire, not the Vijayanagar Empire. But Vijayanagar Empire is the more widely used term which people recognize. So I also got into the habit of using it as well. From 1600s on, onwards, there was civil war in the Vijayanagar Empire. And this led to a weakening of the empire with the result that, you know, these different feudatories uh, who were essentially autonomous rulers called Nayakas, they became independent. So in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra and so on. And the rulers of Tirunel Valley were the Nayakas of Madura from roughly uh, 1600 onwards. And they were great, great rulers, uh, like most Hindu rulers, and they were patrons of the arts, and they kept administration and revenue system going as per the Hindu tradition, which was inherited from the Karnataka Empire. Okay. Now, with the 1700s, uh, obviously due to the Mughal invasions from the north, which uh, started off in the late 1600s. There was a beginning of authority and in 1736, a Muslim mercenary called Chanda Sahib, who was the son-in-law of the so-called Nawab of Arkot, another mercenary. So he deposed the last Nayaka queen, Meenakshi, by deceit and took over the district. So this is not a very unheard of story. Heather Ali did the same with the Wadayars of Mysore. And, uh, you know, this sword of Tipu Sultan, a completely bogus serial, uh, you know, glorified Heather and Deepu to no lengths. So Heather was almost made to seem like some kind of a hero character. But the local Hindu chieftains known as Palayakarars, again, I don't know Tamil, so my pronunciation is probably wrong, and Paligaru in Telugu. Uh, this was corrupted to Poligars by the British. Gave the Muslim despot a very hard time in revenue collection. And what had happened was, these Muslim small-time Nawabs, they took a lot of loan from the East India Company. Uh, because they had no financial administration skills and they frequently ran into debts. So the only way they could recover uh, the money loaned by the East India Company, which was at very high interest rates, was to tax the local people. But then again, they didn't have that much power to actually extract all the money from them. So they gave the local people a hard time, but the Paligars resisted. And, you know, in places they actually fought, uh, you know, the Nawab's agents who were called renters, which was another very, you know, uh, horrible breed uh, of leeches. So they fought them off. So, you know, they didn't have that much power, but indirectly it was the East India Company or what was known as the Company Bahadur, who was actually controlling these, uh, you know, Nawabs and uh, all these people. So by seven, from 1750s onwards, it was really Company Bahadur or the East India Company who called the shots as far as revenue collection was concerned. And as the Nawab of our court increasingly went into the debt. Now the Nawab of our court, uh, you know, deposed Chanda Sahib and took over his, uh, you know, Tirunel Valley district as well. So as the Nawab of our court increasingly went into debt, they gradually took over the revenue collection. And finally, by 1800, they had the formal transfer of the district for themselves, which was really all theirs in but name. And out of the 26 administrators or the tax collectors deputed by the Nawab from 1739 to 1800, the last two were Europeans. And the first collector of the district was a chap called Lushington or Lushington, uh, who became the collector in 1799-1800. And this is when the Paligars revolted. And this is known as the Poligar revolt by the British. This was a very serious threat to the dominance, uh, you know, in Tamil Nadu, uh, especially. And this is also known as the Poligar Wars. So that the tyranny of the East India Company was ferociously resisted by the Poligars, and uh, the uh, you know the image of the 
postage stamp you see here is a kind of a, you know imaginary conceptualization of Veera Pandya Kattabaman uh, who was a great Paligar fighter and a great Paligar. He resisted the British and uh, what happened to the Paligars was the East Indian Company brought their full military might to destroy them because the Marathas were, you know, in their typical intersign feuds. Uh, Tipu, for whatever, you know, he was a jihadi and whatever, he had some nuisance value to the British, so he was destroyed by 1799. So then these guys had a free reign to turn all their military sources on the individual uh, Paligars. So Kattabaman, uh, Veera Pandya Kattabaman, I, I believe, was captured and hanged, and the Pali, Paligars were completely smashed uh, around 1801. And this was not really the end of the Paligars because the last great uh, Paligar who revolted against the British uh, as late as 1847 was Uyallavada Narsimharedi uh, from Andhra Pradesh. So I think there's a movie uh, starring Chiranjeevi which was made a few years back and he was hanged in 1847. Now before 1801 a major part of the district was ruled by Paligars. So, like I said, they were the bulwark of resistance against the Nawab and the British. And they actually stood between the farmers, <coughs> excuse me, and, <coughs> you know, the British and the Nawabs who were trying to extract every last rupee from them. And no surprise that the British lovingly referred to the Palegars as free booters or desperate, desperate mara marauders who extorted money from the people. Because extorting money was exclusively the British, right? So if anybody else acted in the interest of the British, they were against the government. So the word government, again, I emphasize this in every video, was ref referring to the British government, not to the government of India as we understand it today, or any government of nation states who usually act in the interest of the people at least most of the time. So from 79, 1799 to 1805 was the time when the British officially formally took over the region. So the British, after the Paligar uh, War, they began dismantling the indigenous civil and military infrastructure because the Paligars also, uh, you know, kept a class of village policemen known as Desakaval. Again, my pronunciation is probably off. So these were the local village policemen who were in charge of security of the village. And what used to happen was these Desakaval, they used to get a share of the produce uh, from the village. So they also had a share in the village land and share in the produce. So they had a stake in making sure that the village was safe. So the estates of six major Paligars who had revolted against the British, and these were uh, Panjalan Kurichi, Kullatur, Kadalgudi, Eleiram Panai, Kolarpati, and Nagalapuram. So these were broken up and auctioned to two or three Paligars who had stayed loyal to the British. And this led to consolidation of a lot of land in, you know, these two or three, you know, British stooges. And these were the zamindars of Ettayapuram, Maniachi and Melamandai. So these were, th and I think one of the zamindaris was little broken up by the British as well. So after the Paligars were destroyed, so Lushington, the first collector of the district, says in a very pompous tone in 1800 that, I'm quoting him, the nature of the permanent settlement and of the system of law and security by which it is to be enjoyed by themselves and handed down to their posterity has been repeatedly explained to the polygars. So how is it was explained? Now you can figure it out. And they now wait with anxious solicitude the confirmation of a blessing which is to soften them to the remembrance of former sacrifices. So British rule is a blessing. We should all be very grateful and happy for it. So this was the attitude and that's kind of the history in short. So this is history pre-British times because my emphasis is more going to be on the British uh, revenue systems. Uh, and there are different revenue systems. So the history of Tirunel Valley District after 1801 is really the history of the British revenue system or the revenue extortion system in that particular district. So we'll cover this in parts in the next series, sorry, the next part. And so, but before that, in the next part, I will discuss the pre-British land revenue system because we need to have a benchmark to which we can compare and contrast. Okay, so this was the situation before the British occupied the land and this was the situation after they occupied the land or when they were kind of in occupation of the land. So, 
uh, friends this is all for this time i will see you in the next video hariyo